vial number 18 um was factoring a cubic it's been a long time since we've factored cubic equations so i want to go over that because it's quite a process and i saw a lot of people not do it right and we have got to keep this in our minds so this is my example x cubed minus 64. i am asked to factor this now if you were asked to solve this it would be a mistake a big huge grave mistake to simply say i'm going to set it equal to zero and then set it equal to zero and then add 64 over and then take the cube root right that would be a mistake now why we only get one answer how many answers should we have three and you can't just say plus or minus that doesn't work with cube roots so there's a reason we're learning how to factor these it's so you can solve these correctly so let's go through and factor this so remember this is the difference since it's subtract it's the difference of two perfect cubes so what i mean by that is they're both something cubed so x is x cubed, right? So if we take the cube root of the front thing, we get the cube root of x cubed, we get x, right? If you take, take your calculator, guys, let's see you practice typing it in. The cube root of 64. Cube root of 64. You hit the math key, go down to cube root of 64. You get it? 4. Did everybody get that? Okay, so we know, do you guys understand that this is the difference of two perfect cubes? We have x cubed minus 4 cubed. Does everybody understand how it's the difference of two perfect cubes? Okay, now we learned a little trick to factor this. So we took the cube root of the front thing, the cube root of the back thing. Then we set up our first um, binomial here. You put your parentheses, you put in x, you put in 4, and then you drop down the sign. It's the same sign as here, so if this is minus, this is minus. And then our song begins. So we know the front thing is this, the back thing is this. So our song goes the front with the front, then the front with the back, then the back with the back. So let's start off. Front with the front. X times X is X squared. Squared. The front with the front. Done. The front with the back. Front with the back. X. Take it four. No. Four. Four. Are we? Yeah, so it's x times 4, which is 4x, and we're not going to put in our signs quite yet. And then we do the back with the back, 4 times 4, 16. And then we fill in our signs accordingly. Okay, this first sign is always opposite of this sign. So if this is minus, this is positive. And then our end sign is always positive. Now from there, since this is factor completely, look at this piece. It's linear. It's, it's, it's a linear factor. X minus 4 is linear. It's degree 1. So we're done. But this is quadratic. It's degree 2. So we need to see if it factors further. So we do. What multiplies to be A times C since it's quadratic and adds up to be B. A times C. 1 times 16 and adds up to be 4. Now 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Let's look at these factors. Could any add up to be 4? 1 and 16? Two and eight, could they add up to be four? Could four and four add up to be four? So does it factor further? No, it's not factorable. So this is the most factored form. So this would be our answer for this. But the whole reason we learned to do this, you guys, is so that we can solve a cubic equation correctly. Because we would set the linear factor equal to zero, so one of our answers will be x is equal to four, and then we would solve this piece using the quadratic formula since it's not factorable. So we would have three answers, right? Everybody, could we solve a cubic equation? Okay, awesome. So there is a point to learning this. All right, awesome. All right, moving on. So you should be able to do 18 now on your worksheet. Um, last thing, and then I'll let, oh, let's just, yeah, let's let you practice 18 for a second. Ready? So that worksheet was solve using the, um, solve the quadratic function by your method of choice. So you could solve by factoring only if it's factorable. And then we know the quadratic formula always works, but it doesn't always work for all of us because a lot of us make a lot of errors when typing it in. But we've got to get good at it. So I'm going to do problem number 20 with you, hopefully to kind of help you. And if you've already done it, awesome. Check to see if your work was right. Okay, so everybody, first of all, you need to recognize a couple things. It's a quadratic, right? Because the highest degree is degree 2, right? So that is the reason we can solve using the quadratic formula. So could you solve something cubed with the quadratic formula? No. Quadratic formula only works for quadratics. 
Before we can start solving this, we have to have it in standard form and set equal to zero. It is not set equal to zero. But we can change that. We're going to correctly bring 12 over to the other side of the equation. So we have 6x squared plus 31x minus 12 is equal to zero. And now from here, it's our quadratic is in standard form and it's set equal to zero. So we can do the quadratic formula. I'm going to list out what A is. A is 6, right? B is 31 and C is negative 12. So then we do our little song so that we can have the quadratic formula memorized. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Good. So then we're plugging it in. The whole issue here is we have to be so careful. Okay. So negative B means the opposite of B. So we're plugging it in so it's going to be negative 31, right? Plus or minus the square root of B squared. So we're doing 31 squared minus 4. Put these in parentheses times A, which is 6, times C, which is negative 12. And then that's all over 2 times A. So 2 times 6. Are we good so far? So I'm going to keep simplifying this. So we have, and I'm going to show my work here, negative 31 plus and minus the square root. Now let's practice typing this in. Now let's be careful here, but let's practice typing it in all at once. So I want you all to practice so you know you're typing it in right. Because right here is the most common error when the quadratic formula comes. So let's use parentheses. Type it in with me. 31, close your parentheses, squared, minus, and then you type in, in parentheses, 4, then in parentheses, 6, 4 times 6, in parentheses, negative 12. Everybody practice typing it in so you can see if you got the same thing that I got. Did you get that? So you typed something in wrong, so try it again. And that's all over 12. So everybody, I'm going to give everybody a second to make sure they got the same thing I got underneath the radical because that's the most common error of the quadratic formula. If you didn't get that, raise your hand. Let me come look at your, your what you're typing in so I can help you out. Oh, you, oh, I see. Your calculator's calculating it because you put in a square root, and I'm just calculating what's underneath. Because remember that if it's a decimal, we break it down by hand. So that's okay. Everybody else get it? Are you sure? Okay. So we have the square root of 1,249. We tried it in our calculator. First, is it a decimal? Yeah. So can we use decimals? Nope. Okay, so we have to break it down by hand if possible. So we go out to the side. We say one, two, four, nine. We start breaking it down into some factors. So everybody, let's all sit and try for a second. Let's break these down. Let's try to break this down. So I'm not the only one up here doing it. It will take me forever. So everybody, let's see if you can find some factors. Ready, set, go. Try to find some factors of 1,249 for me. He got clear past 50, and there's nothing that... Divide. So this is a prime number, so we just leave it. This is the most simplified form, right? So this is considered more simplified than the decimal. So this would be our answer, right? Yeah. Very good. So that one, we would not have been able to solve by factoring. It wasn't factorable. And you know that because it wouldn't come out like this. It would come out to be perfect numbers if it was factorable. All right, any questions on that one? So you should at least have that one done on your worksheet. All right, next thing. Okay, so now the next part we didn't get to, but we are going to get to it now. So it says evaluate the discriminant to determine the number of solutions and what type of solutions you have. All right, so discriminant, everybody recall, the discriminant is just a small piece of the quadratic formula. And it tells us everything, a lot that we need to know about the number of solutions and what type of solutions you're going to have. 
So remember that the discriminant is just this part of the quadratic formula. B squared minus 4 times A times C. So you'd have to just know that. The discriminant is B squared minus 4 times A times C. Now think about it, guys. If it was quadratic and we used the quadratic formula to solve, we would have gotten two answers, right? Either way, for the most part, right? Two answers, okay? If there was a negative under our radical, so if our discriminant was negative, we would have two imaginary solutions, right? Isn't a negative under a square root when we pull out an i? Right? So when we have two imaginary solutions, if our discriminant was negative. Two imaginary. Does everybody understand why? If there was a negative under there, it would be imaginary on the outside, and that means two of them, because plus and minus, so two imaginary solutions. Now, if it was just a whole number, or just a number underneath that's not negative, we would have two real solutions. They're not imaginary, right? So they'd be two real solutions, just like in our previous example, two real solutions. Because they're real. And then, if, what if our discriminant was zero? So let's say we calculate, calculated this and our square root was zero. Isn't anything plus or minus, isn't the square root of zero, zero? Yeah? So anything plus or minus zero is just the same thing, right? So if our discriminant is zero, we have only one real solution. Does that make sense, everybody? So really, you shouldn't have to memorize any of this. It should make sense to you of where the discriminant is coming from and why, why you get that. So I'm going to give you a couple examples here. Let's say that we took a quadratic, we used the quadratic formula, and we solved, and we got to this point. We will have 2 plus and minus, zero, the square root of zero, over two, right? Which is two plus zero over two and two minus zero over two. What's two plus zero? So two over two is one, right? What's two minus zero? Two minus zero. Two over two is the same thing, right? So do you guys understand? So if the discriminant is equal to zero, we have one real solution. Guys, I'm trying to help this actually make sense to you, not just have you memorize something. So are we with me? Okay. So looking at this one, two plus and minus the square root of negative four over two. If the discriminant's negative. Let's look at what we'd have if we simplified it. We could stop here and write the answer, but let's look at why. We would have 2 plus and minus 2i over 2, right? Right, everybody? So then we would have 1 plus and minus i, right? If we simplify that. So then we have two imaginary solutions. We have 1 plus i and 1 minus i. Isn't that two imaginary? So it doesn't make sense of why if it's a negative, it's two imaginary. Okay. And then last one, we have 2 plus and minus the square root of 5 over 2. That's our answer. Those are real solutions. So we would have two real solutions. If it's not a negative under here, then it's a real solution. So we would have two real solutions and something like this. Okay, so does that make sense on discriminant? All right, so let's do this one. Well, let's see. Do you need me to do one, or do you want to just start going with 22 and 23? Okay, so evaluate the discriminant to determine the number of solutions and what type of solution do you have. So looking at 3x squared minus 7x is equal to 2. It's quadratic. If I wanted to go through the whole thing and solve it all, I could. And then I could look at my answers and say, okay, there's two real solutions. But that's a lot of extra work on me. I only need to look at the discriminant to determine the type and number of solutions I have. So to be able to do the quadratic formula, you have to get it set equal to 0. So we would have 3x squared minus 7x, we would subtract 2 from both sides. So minus 2 is equal to 0. And then from there, I'm not going to go through the whole quadratic formula. I'm just going to use the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4 times a times c. So b squared would be negative 7 squared minus 4 times a. a is 3 times c is negative 2. So I'm going to type that into my calculator and see what kind of answer I get for that little piece. Negative 7 in parentheses squared. Everybody should type it in because it's the whole typing it in that most people mess up on. 4 times 3 times negative 2. 
I get, you should all get 73. That's not our answer, that's our discriminant, right? Everybody. So let's think about it. If we did go through, we would have the quadratic formula. Something plus and minus the square root of 73 all over something, right? So are we going to have a imaginary solution? Was it a negative? No. So we won't have an I, but we will have two real, two real solutions. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. We're all good at that. So if this would have been a negative answer, what would it be? I. Two, what? Imaginary. Two imaginary. If it was zero, what would our answer be? One real solution. Very good. We're just, this is our answer. We're not finding the actual solution. We could have, but that would have been extra work. It just says find the number and type of solution. Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to do problems 22 and 23. Just use the discriminant. But don't forget to set it equal to zero before starting. All right, ready, set, go. So we're just going to be, once again, 4-1 and 4-2 are kind of building us up on what we already know. We're just kind of getting into some more rigor. It's nothing new to us, so most of it, but some more rigorous material here. So looking at this, um, I'm going to do number one with you on the worksheet. So it says find the product. Find the product of 2x plus 2y times 5x minus y. Well, it's a binomial. The only reason it's a little bit more advanced is because we have two different variables in here, but we can totally do this. So guys, we're going to double distribute. So I'm going to start with this term, and it doesn't hurt to just draw your arrow so you don't miss anything. And draw them as you go. Don't just draw them in at once. As you go, draw them in so you know what you've done. So carefully, you guys, at this point in the year, we can't afford to make little mistakes on little things. So we got to be careful. 2x times 5x is what? 10x. 10x. Squared. 10x squared. Very good, right? It would be oh. it would be detrimental to just put x. 2x. I thought it was 1x. Okay, hey, we've done that. So then 2x times negative y. Negative Good, negative 2xy. Very good. Questions? Not done. Now I'm going to distribute positive 2y times 5x. Good, plus 10xy. And then we have positive 2y times negative y. Awesome job, guys. You're absolutely right. Okay, so from there we combine my terms. We have 10x squared, no other x squareds. But we have negative 2xy's plus 10xy's is how many xy's? Good. Positive 8xy's. Very good. And then we have minus 2y squared. So actually, fun fact for you, everybody. Good question. I'm actually really glad you asked. So because we're putting this in standard form, um, I got asked a really good question. Would it be more correct to put the y squared in front of the xy? So technically, this is, every single term in here is degree 2. Because even though these are individually degree 1, there's still two of them being multiplied, which adds up to be degree 2. Even though we can't add them up, they're not like bases, it's still considered to be degree 2. So actually kind of fun fact for you there. Does that make sense? So they're all equally degree 2. So we're, we're good in any order here with this one. Great question. Glad you asked. Any others? So on, I've seen this on an end of level test. They said, what's the degree of 10xyz? What's the degree on that now that I just taught you? Degree 3. Awesome. Very good. So most students put 1. Common there. So interesting. It was good. I'm glad you brought that up. All right, guys. Um, do I need to do number three with you, or do you like just ready? Are you ready to go? You're ready to go. Awesome. What about something bigger like this? Would you be okay? Do you need me to do it? Okay, I think I'm gonna let you go for it then. So do one through six. Now be so careful. It's really a shame when you make a sign error and have to redo the whole problem. Okay. Here is simplify this expression. So guys, this is one of the most common errors is, and a lot of you made this on our first test when we were seeing stuff like this. 
They look at this and they distribute just because there's parentheses. But we've got to be really careful. Everybody look at the problem. Are we multiplying? Okay, so because we're not multiplying, we're not double, triple distributing. We're not distributing. That distributing is a multiplication property. So with this, we're simply subtracting this polynomial and this polynomial. But we do have to be careful with subtraction because technically, isn't this negative 1? So then I'm just going to ask you to get in the habit of distributing your negative 1 through. So because it's negative 1 times that, it is multiplication. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, right? Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Is everybody following me? Negative 1 times negative 4 cubed is positive 4 cubed. Now, does everybody understand that I've now rewritten these with the correct signage so I can just forget those? So then I can just drop these down. I have negative 3 minus 3x cubed minus 2x. Sorry, I was just looking to make sure I was recording. And then from there, I just simply combine my terms. Now, get in this habit, guys. As you go through, cross out things once you've added them up so you don't miss anything. I do it. You should do it. So I'm going to start with my highest degree. Negative 3x cubed plus 4x cubed. How many x cubed? 1x cubed. 1x cubed, right? Everybody? You don't have to write 1x. Right. But I'm writing it just so people can see for a second. Is everybody good with the 1x cubed? You see how I cross them out and it helps me not lose focus on where I was looking? And not double dip and whatnot? Okay, next thing, next highest degree. Negative 2x's minus 3x's. Good. Negative 5x's. Negative 3 minus 2. Negative 5. And then it's in standard form. Yeah, I'm going to drop off that one because I know that that is te technically more simplified. Minus 5. There's our answer. Take some of the habits that I've developed by crossing things out as you go and do some of those things. All right, so everybody pay attention on 7 through 10. If you're multiplying, adding, or subtracting, that's what you're going to do now, 7 through 10. That is what's due by Monday. Then we'll finish this up on Monday.